AMD's RX 6700 series GPUs are looking more impressive every day. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently, more leaks regarding the upcoming RX 6700 XT from AMD were leaked over at Igor's lab, which by the way, links to all my sources will be in the description below. But according to the leaks, the RX 6700 XT could clock higher than the 6800 series GPUs, leading to a seriously fast graphics card. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what I believe are going to be the full specs, performance, and price of this GPU, and then I'll give you my thoughts on how it's likely going to stack up against the newly released RTX 3060 Ti. So in terms of the specs, the RX 6700 XT should pack 40 compute units for a total of 2,560 shaders. It should have a game clock of around 2,015 megahertz, a boost clock of around 2,250 megahertz, which of course is the same as the RX 6800 XT. But you know, the one thing that's different about this card is that supposedly according to Igor's lab, there was a couple of BIOSes that leaked out that showed a max peak clock of 2,854 megahertz, which is a significant increase over the 6800 series GPUs, and a max limit of 2,950 megahertz, which again is a pretty substantial substantial increase because, you know, if you go ahead and you take a look at Wattman with the RX 6800 XT, you'll notice that you can only get a limit of 2,800 megahertz on those cards. And if you have some really good cooling on these 6800 series cards, you should be able to actually push it a little bit further. So it looks like they're unlocking potentially the 6700 and the 6700 XT to have slightly more overclocking headroom. Now in terms of the VRAM, it should have 12 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 16 gigabits per second on a 192 bit bus for a total bandwidth of 380 84 gigabytes per second and this should all be running on a one eight pin power connection so that should give you a max of around 225 watts to play with as technically within spec the eight pin power connector can give you 150 watts and the PCIe connector can give you 75 watts now of course there were a couple different BIOSes leaked that showed one with 186 watt limit and the other one with a 211 watt limit so yeah that 225 watts is probably going to be your maximum limit that you can push through these cards unless you do some sort of crazy modding to them now in terms of performance the arc 60 6800 should be able to push out roughly about 21% more T-flops than the 6700 XT if the 6700 XT does have a max boost clock of 2250 megahertz, which of course it could be a little bit higher, but if it does, then yes, that means that the 6800 should be close to about 20% faster. And you know, if you take that and you compare it to the 3060 Ti based on hardware and box numbers, the RX 6800 is about 23% faster than the 3060 Ti. So, you know, you know, taking those numbers into account, it looks like the 6700 XT at least in theory should be roughly about the same performance as a 3060 Ti and potentially a little bit faster which you know that does look really good and that's definitely promising considering the fact that the 3060 Ti only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM whereas the 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and we're talking about a class of performance here where ray tracing isn't quite as important but you know it all comes down to the price and that's where I think that this card is going to be you know it's either going to end up being a really good card or really bad card depending on about $50 difference so I think this card's going to come in somewhere between $400 to $450. And I think if we break it down here, you know, it'll either be $450 for the 6700 XT and $400 for the 6700, which by the way, the only difference between the 6700 and the 6700 XT should be in theory that the 6700 will have 36 compute units versus the 6700 XT's 40 compute units. And then the 6700 should also be clocked a little bit lower and probably have a power limit, an artificial power limit that's a little bit lower. So it's just going to be only a little bit slower than that. So if it comes in at $450 and the 6700 is $400, well, I think AMD is kind of in a troublesome spot here because the 3060 Ti has an MSRP of $400. Now, keeping in mind that, you know, you're not really ever going to be able to get a 3060 Ti for $400, but all the reviewers who are doing the reviews right now are saying, wow, this 3060 Ti, it's absolutely awesome and it's only $400, even though that might not be the case because from everything that I've heard, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get a 3060 Ti for anything under $450. So if the 6700 XT ends up releasing at 450 and it's, you know, technically competing against a $400 card and it's, you know, either as fast or just only a little bit faster, even though it has more VRAM, I think it's going to be a tough sell for a lot of gamers. Now, if they are able to get this card in at, you know, say... 400 to 430 dollars i think it then becomes a lot more competitive and another thing we're not talking about here is the stock so if the 6700 xt can't get in stock enough well then it doesn't really matter what the price is i mean they could be charging a thousand dollars for this card if you can't buy it it just doesn't really matter so if they're able to get this card in with enough stock so the aib partners aren't charging you know 500 plus dollars for this gpu and they're able to get it in at a price that's like say 400 to 430 dollars i think it's going to be extremely compelling for that extra four gigabytes of vram 
program. But again, if they end up with a scenario where, you know, they can barely get any in, the MSRP is $450, and then the third-party cards, which are the ones that you're probably most likely going to be able to get your hands on, are, you know, closing in on $500. At that point, I think it's kind of a, you know, it's not quite as good of a deal. You're only looking at $80 more dollars for the 6800 You're looking at the same price or slightly cheaper for the 3060 Ti. And we got to remember that, you know, NVIDIA's software stack is a little bit better. I mean, there's things such as, you know, of course, NVIDIA has slightly better ray tracing right now and they have DLSS. But on top of all that stuff, you know, people are just more willing to trust NVIDIA's drivers at this point, even though I've used a 6800 XT and I've personally had no issues and I haven't seen anyone else reporting issues. It, it just is something that people are, you know, they look at NVIDIA and they think better software. So it's going to be hard to sell someone a GPU that performs the same for the exact same price with only a little bit more VRAM when they're missing out on some features. And on top of that, you have to keep in mind that like for uh, people who work with videos like me, if you're using Premiere Pro and you're doing GPU acceleration, unfortunately, I've found that the AMD cards right now do not work with Premiere Pro, which is a huge oof. And it's something that is essentially going to make it so that I cannot use an AMD card right now until they fix that. So in my opinion, AMD really has to give you the RTX 3060 Ti level of performance or better for cheaper. Because if they can't do that, I think they're going to have a really hard time trying to get people to jump ship over from NVIDIA to AMD. And, you know, I think that's kind of bad for everyone at this point because AMD only had, last time I checked, around 20% of the discrete GPU market, which, you know, if they continue down this path and everyone keeps buying NVIDIA, well, you're just going to end up with a scenario where we're, you know, got $1,200, $1,500 GPUs going forward here in the high end. And, you know, I'd rather have there be more competition and have a little bit of a fire underneath NVIDIA so that we get more fair prices from both of the companies and we get situations where, you know, AMD comes out with smart access memory and then NVIDIA says, ooh, that looks like a good, you know, that looks like a good technology to implement. Let's try and do that too. So just more competition is great for us. And so I hope that they're able to get these cards out with enough supply and, you know, they're able to get it out with a decent price. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the 6700 and 6700 XT? Are you going to be waiting or are you going to be buying an NVIDIA card? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, NVIDIA and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.